we require students to uh, do a high impact learning experience. And that can be an internship, a study abroad program, or undergraduate research. And my personal favorite is the internship route because uh, we're all familiar with the you know, students graduating with a lot of debt, and some students and some majors can't find jobs. And my counter to that is, would you do anything while you were here to help get yourself in a position to get a job? And doing these internships is one of the best ways our students can segue into a career. So um, I hope that after you've seen all of these faculty members in the room, that uh, you will encourage the students that you interact with to go do internships and we'll help sponsor some of these. And this year, uh, or this summer, I sponsored 16 of them. And so I'm highlighting three of these. In fact, uh, if you're trying to, if you're in the process of planning your next summer vacation, uh, today's going to be a good day to, uh, to get some advice and some tips on that. So anyway, the students are doing all these and they're getting free credit hours uh, for these internships. Our first, my first presenter, that's not Reagan, is uh, Jessica Bear Claw John. <laughs> Jessica, she's from San Antonio and she's graduating uh, in a few weeks. Yeah. And she's going to go back to work at Yellowstone forever until August, and then you're going to go to the Skagit Valley uh, Ranger School up yeah. in Washington. And I asked her what her favorite plant was. I just knew she'd say cotton, but she <laughs> said the uh, Lance Lead Stone Crop. It's a succulent that grows in harsh environments. So, with that, Jessica, tell us all about Yellowstone. All right, guys. Yeah, so, what I'm going to be talking about today is an organization called Yellowstone Forever. That's where I did my internship at. Um, a little bit about the organization Yellowstone is the official nonprofit organization for Yellowstone National Park. They um, partner with the National Park Service in giving uh, park tours. So, they do in state programs at the Lamar Buffalo Ranch and at their other location, which is the Overlook Campus in Gardner. Um, and they also do day trips, so if you're just wanting to go do Yellowstone in a day, I highly recommend this organization. They also work with citizen science. Um, there was a couple of programs this year where we helped out with research. We did a PICA project, um, and then we also worked with some pollinators and things like that. But what did I do? I was a volunteer at the Lamar Buffalo Ranch. I worked at both campuses, but I was only at the Overlook campus for a week, getting my training done with the organization. Um, I was a program assistant for the classes, for the institute programs, and I was also the risk management for a group. So if I deemed um, one of the outings to be inappropriate or if it was too much for one of the group members, I was the person who made that call and backed it off. Um, I, another harsher part was yeah, you had to clean campus. So yeah, you had to clean the toilets and the cabins and stuff like that, but that was the least fun part. Um, we also did weed management for the Lamar Buffalo Ranch, and I was a bus driver. Uh, so just a tour of the campus. So this right here is the bunkhouse, and that's where you eat dinner and such. There's also a ranger station on campus, which will become important in a little bit. This other photo with the snow was literally taken on June 21st. <laughs> so um, what it was I certified in this past summer, I was certified in wilderness and front country first aid. I also got my CPR license and my CDL license to drive the bus around. Um, weed management. So we, we, uh, we handpicked weeds across the campus at the Lamar Buffalo Ranch. There were no herbicides involved. Heidi, the um, weed management coordinator for the National Park Service would come out and see how we were doing. Um, weeds that we picked, we picked hound's tongue, curly dock, um, desert alyssum, cheatgrass, multiple mustards, and Canada thistle, which is very painful to pick. Classes that I assisted. My very first class that I assisted was spring into wildlife photography with Meg Summers. Whenever Meg is not doing wildlife photography, she is a judge, um, as well as a lawyer. That's Meg right there. We were taking a picture of a bull moose and she was trying to get the perfect shot. Um, and as you can see, we did get a couple perfect shots. This is a bear, a grizzly bear nursing her twin cubs. And I also got to see a moose nursing her twin calves in the middle of a river. Uh, the second class that I got to do was Grizzlies of Greater Yellowstone with Mark and Sue. Um, Yellowstone National Park used to be known for their dump sites where they would dump trash and visitors would come and watch the grizzly bears eat. There were no fences. <laughs> you just sat there with the grizzly bears and watched them eat. Um, so 
that's what we were doing here. This is actually one of the first, the last dump sites to be closed. This is me inside of a black bear den. He was a hundred pound black bear. He wasn't around at the time. He had vacated the premises. Um, and so to get to that bear den, you had to hike down a ridge down to here to go and see it. It was actually kind of scary because if you fell, you were falling pretty far. Um, then I did outdoor skills and wilderness survival with Robert. Um, this class was particularly fun as in after I took this photo, uh, we were making a fire so that we could teach the students how to cook steak on just a campfire. There were no like metal objects involved or anything like that. I cut my thumb and I had to leave the class to go and get it stitched up. Um, but we went outside of the national park to build this. Um, you, in the national park, you can't cut down any of the trees. You can't mess with the natural way that things are because we want to preserve it. That's the first goal for Yellowstone forever. Um, and then I did meandering through the wildflowers with Wayne Phillips. Um, Wayne was a very cool guy. The first thing that we did was we cleansed ourselves with sagebrush and then we went out and discovered all kinds of wildflowers. So it was a lot of fun. I got to par partner on this class with my friend Parker throughout the whole experience. So we definitely made sure that everyone was safe when we were climbing higher mountains to go and look at all the other flowers. I also did Yellowstone wet lens with Dr. Ray and Dr. Peterson. Um, in this class, we honestly went around Yellowstone wetlands with a net and we were catching salamander as well as the different frogs. So there's only five amphibians in Yellowstone National Park. Um, so a couple of them are featured here. This is a tiger salamander. Um, I believe this is a chorus frog and of course we have a snake. And then I finally did uh, advanced fly fishing, big day trips. These are 12 mile hikes a day. Um, not, and it's not that Steve Harvey, I promise. I know it looks super cool. Uh, this is Steve Harvey. <laughs> we went out into grizzly bear country. Um, uh, the very first hike that we did, I literally saw so much bear sign that I wouldn't turn my back uh, on the group for a second. I stayed with the group the whole entire time because I totally felt eyes on the back of my back while we were walking through the woods. So. And then finally, my last class that I did was with Jim Gary and Dr. Picton. These two were a whole lot of fun. It was in the middle of the bison rut. And so we would go out every single day and watch the bull bison fight for dominance for the females. Side adventures that I got into. Um, Weekend Warriors is a group. If you ever want to volunteer or go up to Yellowstone, I recommend volunteering with this group here. Um, they come out to the Lamar Buffalo Ranch and get a free stay, um, and they work and clean up the ranch. And when they're not cleaning, they get to go and do whatever they want. And this is why the ranger being on camp. Oh, no, JK, I'm ahead of myself. Um, I also worked at Canines and Corbins with Dr. Marslov and his wife. We would capture ravens in a trap, and we would put backpack transmitters on them to track their locations to see where they were hunting at and where their roosts were at. This raven in particular that we had caught, um, I didn't know it at the time, but they remember faces, and he would follow me around campus out every single day. It was kind of freaky. <laughs> and this was why the rangers being on campus were important. We woke up one morning and we were watching the wolves during Dr. Marslov's class, and uh, we saw two people waving their underwear at us in the middle of the Lamar River, and they had gotten stuck because they tried to swim at the very beginning of May when the snow melt was still high. And so they got stuck in the middle of the river. And I got to actually assist on getting them out of the river, which was the coolest part. And it got my foot in the door with the National Park Service to become a park ranger. And that's how I got into Skagit Valley Ranger School. Um, I did two ranger ride-alongs. One of them, I assisted in arresting a DUI. The other one, um, the closest thing that we got was an open container case, and then I had to be dropped off because uh, I couldn't be over a level three as a ride along. So a level three is like major car crash um, where they need EMS. So a, a major car crash happened on one of the mountains and I couldn't go along any longer. Um, hiking, did I mention that I hiked everywhere? Uh, I did 120 plus miles this summer. The most high miles that I hiked in a week was 54, and that was with Steve Harvey's class, as well as I hiked that week Mount Washburn, 
which uh, was the highest elevation change at 1,500 feet, and that was from the bottom of the mountain all the way up to the top. What the future holds, like I said, I'm going back up there January 5th to work with the organization again, and then next fall, I'm going to Skagit Valley Ranger School. If you're interested in applying or if you want to go to an institute program with them, uh, you can apply at yellowstone.org. Other than that, I don't really have anything else for you guys. Thank you guys. Couple questions for Jessica? Yes, sir. What kind of accommodations did they have for you? Today? So for the accommodations, I got my own cabin. Um, I, I got my own cabin for a little bit, and then I had to bunk with someone else in the exact same cabin. Um, they provide housing, but they do not provide food, so you have to go back into town and get food. Um, other than that, I didn't know this until I signed the contract with them, but as the volunteer program, you get $15 a day back as a refund for your food that you purchased during the whole entire trip, as well as tips on all of the classes. I didn't know that I got tips. So if someone tried to hand me $40 and I was like, whoa, whoa, that's not, I can't do that. And my boss came and said, take it. So they do accommodate you. You weren't just sleeping in a hammock. Yes, sir. Okay, for those of us that have hiked up in that area, what do you have for protection when you were taking pictures of a, uh, a mama bear and her cubs? So, Most of us run the other way. <laughs> <laughs> so always remember 25 yards for uh, herbivores, 100 yards for predators. So she was actually 100 yards away. That was taken through a zyscope, which is this... I mean, it's like this big, and you just look, and you could see her. Um, it's basically giant binoculars. Um, and so 100 yards away, the closest I ever got to a bear was in a bus, and he was right here next to my bus. So be safe out there. We, at all times, would carry bear spray on us, no matter where we went. Even if we were going out with a group in the bus all day, we still had to carry bear spray. We also carried a radio and a first aid kit, um, just because we were that safety. Um, and if... So there's two forms of wilderness first aid. There's wilderness first aid, and then there's wilderness first responder. If the instructor was a wilderness first responder, we would always defer to them in a situation where someone got hurt. Any other questions, guys? Hey, hey Jessica, what, what type of work are the citizen scientists doing up there? Um, I only know of a couple of projects. They're doing a PICA project to see um, PICA decline because they are an indicator for um, – global warming, actually. Um, they live in, um, like, these mountain falls in the rocks and um, at higher elevations. And if they're no longer there, that means that they're moving down to lower elevations where they can still keep that nice climate for them, um, as well as um, the weed management and then the, oh, man. The, there was another one. They were doing pollinators to see what types of pollinators were around the park. So they would set up these traps around the park, and we would go and empty them. We'd go help empty them out and then identify the bugs. I was never part of that project in particular because I was always on classes, um, but it was still pretty cool. All right. Thanks, guys.